Here are seven truths about immigration in under 70 seconds. Under 70 seconds, he's keeping it. Seems short to be honest, but I'm sure that the people that these truths, or should I say his truth, because his truth is different from the truth, um, these people will be able to derive enough information from this for the two minutes hate, so they should be just fine. Let me first explain why this video is even circulating the internet in the first place. It's titled, Seven Truths About Immigration. No one's anti-immigration, or at least very few people are anti-immigration. What the left likes to do, and they really, really are persistent with this, they falsely conflate the conservative position of being anti-illegal immigration, formerly known as enforcing our laws, with being totally and completely against all immigration. So then, to perpetuate this, they make crap like this, defending against arguments that aren't even being made. The only reason that this video exists, frankly speaking, is to create the illusion that there is actually an attack on legal immigration by conservatives. That is it. Low information individuals, they see the headlines and the speeches and the other BS that is spread in the mainstream news about how conservatives are anti-immigration and then they go online and they see this video and they're like, wait a second, I can arm myself with seven truths to own the conservatives with facts and logic. I'm laughing because I know that's what the Ben Shapiro fanboys like to say and it still applies though and the funny thing is is, since the argument is built upon false pretenses, none of these truths would actually work in the argument. And I've been involved in this before. I'm like, yeah, illegal immigrants, man, they leech off government handouts. Well, no, actually, immigrants are less likely to consume welfare than natives. And you go, huh, interesting. But what does that have to do with illegal immigrants? And <laughs> it's like they just freeze like a deer in the headlights. They're like trying to replay like every episode of last week tonight, just like looking for what John Oliver would say. But of course, they can't respond because they have to maintain that the argument is about legal immigration in order to use their facts because there's no way to argue in favor of illegal immigration if you're going to argue honestly. All right, let's send it. Number one, a record high of 75% of Americans now say immigration is a good thing for the country. Great, that sounds like something we can all agree on. Um, anyways, while we're polling Americans, here's one for you straight from Harvard Harris. 80% of Americans want to close down the borders. 70% want chain migration gone. 68% want the visa lotteries gone and for people to come on merit. You see, the majority of Americans are actually very anti-illegal immigration, but the left knows that it has to keep importing voters since no one really wants to vote for them anymore, so they make it an issue of morality, as if we're trying to keep everyone out of the country. Nope, just the illegal aliens. The only reason he brought up that figure, by the way, is to convince you that the majority of Americans are actually against Trump's agenda, which he intentionally misrepresents when in actuality, the opposite is the case. Next. Number two, America needs more immigrants, not fewer, because our population is rapidly aging. Our population's rapidly aging? Like that's it, what we have now is it? People aren't having kids. All the immigrants are just young people. Also, what's rapidly aging? I mean, I know you guys don't like objective truths, but I'm pretty sure everyone's aging at about the same pace, according to Father Time. And they'll say, well, the native born birth rate's falling. Eh, not really, still one of the highest in the industrialized world, my guy. But uh, if you wanna decrease wages and increase housing prices, I mean, I guess we can. Number three, historically, new immigrants have contributed more to society in taxes than they've taken from society in terms of public assistance. Okay, let's talk about the relationship that illegal immigrants have with taxes and government benefits though, since that's the actual argument that is being held nationally. 62% of illegal immigrants are on welfare programs, which could include cash supplements, food, housing, Medicaid, etc. Only 48.5% of legal immigrants are on welfare, and only 30.8% of native households are on welfare. Too many people on welfare. Uh, anyways, when you add up the entire dollar amount that illegal immigrants contribute in taxes and subtract the total amount that they cost us every year between entitlements, removal, etc., you have a deficit of $116 billion that they are draining from us. Number four, most immigrants don't take jobs away from native-born Americans. To the contrary, their spending creates more jobs. Interesting that he acknowledges that spending creates more jobs. That's almost an argument in favor of tax cuts. Anyway, Pew disagrees, and this should seem pretty self-explanatory, but I guess I'll break it down. If an illegal immigrant has a job in this country, by definition, he or she is occupying a job that an American could have. And since there's about 8.5 million illegal immigrants in the American workforce, that's about 8.5 million jobs that illegal immigrants are occupying instead of Americans. Please, please tell me that, oh, well, Americans won't do the jobs. Really? Because the Department of Commerce went ahead and found out that out of the 474 civilian occupations in this country, only six are occupied primarily by illegal immigrants. Only six. And even those are still 46% native born. Those six occupations, less than 1% of all civilian jobs. You buffoons. Number five, Trump's claim that undocumented immigrants generate more crime is dead wrong. Both legal and undocumented immigrants are significantly less likely to commit crimes than people born in the United States. He actually just used the Washington Post as a source with confidence. That's kind of silly, but 
Okay, now he's actually straightforwardly addressing the illegal immigrants. He says that they don't actually commit more crime, they commit less crime than native-born citizens. And notice how he has to remind you that Trump said this so that he can feel smarter than the President of the United States. Now, this is actually pretty inconclusive because the study that he's using here was done on one city in Texas. He's using that to represent the entire country. And also, the studies that are typically associated with this conclude that legal immigrants are less likely to commit crimes than native-born citizens, which is true, but there isn't actually any credible information that explicitly states whether or not illegal immigrants commit more or less crimes on a national scale than native-born Americans. There's actually a ton of information out there discussing exactly why this is such a hard conclusion to draw, but from what I've seen, it isn't obvious to me at all that this is indisputable that they're less likely to, to commit crimes. I think that the general consensus amongst people not viewing this through the lens of an ideology is that more research and better research is needed before a conclusion is drawn. Number six, violent crime rates in America are actually at historic lows, with the homicide rate back to its level from the early 1960s. This is true. Crime in America and all over the world, it's getting better, despite what the media like to say, um, what is it? If it bleeds, it leads, sonny boy, but, uh, yeah, this, just because crime as a whole is decreasing doesn't mean that we should not continue the effort to decrease crime. In fact, perhaps the effort to decrease crime is indeed what's decreasing the crime. I don't know. Number seven, illegal border crossings have been declining since 2014, long before Trump's crackdown. There's no surge in illegal immigration. To be fair, they did start to go up again in 2016, but then dropped 25% after Trump got elected. Once again, just because they're decreasing doesn't mean that we should stop enforcing the laws. Enforcing the laws, arguably, is what makes them decrease. That being said, to call it a crisis in comparison to the levels that we've seen before is probably inappropriate and inflammatory by design. However, Trump brought illegal immigration into the discussion more so than any other candidate in recent history. And good for him! I'm glad the country's finally taking this problem seriously because we were running out of time. Really. Please spread the truth. Mm. I just did. If you like this video, click my face to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up and a comment, let me know how I'm doing. And I know you've seen that video on your Facebook before, so go ahead and start that fight with your liberal coworker in the comments now. Thank you so much for watching as always, and may God bless America.